It's now just eight days to the local government elections. The promises are huge, but can you imagine competing against a sibling and family member in an election? Well, today we speak to the Ndabeni brothers and cousins who are vying for the same votes in Matatiela, sweet patata. And Nando's cuts the wings of Gareth Cliff. Good evening and welcome to Elections 360 Degrees. I'm Aldrin Simpier. Well, so today we are asking you which party leader stands, moves, will get you to the polls. You've seen them on these uh, campaign rallies and all of these dance moves. Some very, very strange. And we'd like to hear your response on social media using the hashtag, hashtag Elections360. And history has been made in the small town of uh, Matatiele in the Eastern Cape. Four cousins from the Ndabeni family are contesting the same Ward 10 in the Matatiele local municipality. This as the country heads to the local government elections on the 1st of November. This is happening for the first time in the dawn, since the dawn of democracy. One of the cousins is an independent candidate, while the other three represent political parties like the ANC, the AIC, as well as the EFF. Our report visited the family and filed this report. Four family members competing in one ward. The Ndabeni candidates are from the village of Taba in Matatiele. They share the same great-grandfather from the Mashia clan. Their political views may differ, but they have one common goal, to bring change to residents of Ward 10. This ward has been led by the ANC since the establishment of local government. However, the three Ntabeni cousins say there is lack of service delivery, mostly concerned about the infrastructure, water provision and youth unemployment. I was asked by the communities of Ward 10 to, to, to come and stand because they were really tired of the parties that are not actually delivering what is expected of them. The main challenges around this ward is road infrastructure. The roads, um, it's very difficult to move from point A to point B in the villages. Uh, we've got challenges uh, of uh, youth unemployment, uh, drugs, uh, drugs, uh, alcohol abuse. So we'll fix that uh, because we'll create jobs in order for youth to, 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 to be out of the thing, we have to create jobs for them, keep them busy. We need to have a, a, an agricultural college here in Matate, and I think that, that was our first priority. Secondly, is the, the maintenance of roads to, to, to those who, who are still living, because they are full of potholes right across. Despite his cousins raising these concerns, the ANC candidate believes his party has worked for this ward. Honestly speaking, it's a blue lie as to say that what then uh, the ANC-led government has never done anything in this place. As you can see, this is an access road from R56 to Makungoloni village, and also there is another one that was built recently, which is Tart. The contesting of Ward 10 by the Ndabene cousins has surprised the community. I am old now and I will be turning 60 years in June next year, but we have never seen this happen in our ward. We see this as a family dispute showing its ugly face for the whole public to see. They come from the same village and from the same family. Even residents in the villages keep asking us what is exactly happening because they are confused. What we see now Four members of the same family contesting the same word is new to us. We are seeing it for the first time. But all we want is someone whom we will elect to lead us. We will not vote for everyone. However, these cousins are adamant that their political affiliations will not interfere with their family values. It will never cause divisions because the Ntabeni family is a very big family, but it's a family with values. We, 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 we respect the family values, which um, I could say those values are the values that keep us 
together as a family. We, we may have political ideology differences, but when it comes to family, we don't mix family and politics. The cousins had their hands full this weekend with their election campaigns. All four are determined to see the word elevated. But come the 1st of November, only one of them will come out victorious. Fundusom Tlegu, the SABC News, Matadiele. Well, and they now join us um, via Zoom. Jens, thank you so much for making time for us this evening. I guess there's no fighting that's happening right now. Okay, we seem to um, just need to reestablish that connection um, with those cousins. He's just thinking about um, how interesting it must be, considering what could be happening at some of those family events. Imagine the uh, political debates that could be taking place. Jens, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you guys Thank so much you. for making time for us. Which one of the three of you, because we are now told that Liola unfortunately won't be able to join us, which one of the three of you would be able to say that I first started this thing of being interested in politics? You know, <laughs> Line is not clear, sir. Can you repeat? So, so I'm asking that, um, considering that you have yeah, four cousins um, competing in the same ward, coming from the same family, I want to find out who was the first one um, to hit the ground running and becoming a politician. Uh, thank okay. you very much. Uh, greetings to fellow South Africans, uh, in particular the community of Matatiel. My name is Pamanda, government and dear brother. Uh, what, uh, uh, one uh, okay. uh, let's just quickly station. try to fix that audio. Um, there seems to be a problem with the network there, the network not stable. But uh, let's quickly go to Loiso, who's joining us um, via the hybrid. Loiso, good evening. Thank you so much for making time for us as well. I don't know whether you'd be able to answer that question of um, the four cousins. Who was the first one who became a politician? Uh, good evening, Adrian, and good evening to the viewers of Channel 405, SAPC TV. Uh, I think I'm the first one who started to be an activist uh, out of these four brothers because I'm the eldest of, the, of them all. I started in the mid-80s while I was still in the KZN uh, in a location called Lamontville. So I started to be an activist there and there. there. And after that, I joined, uh, in the 90s, I joined, uh, I joined the PAC. But because I saw that the PAC is not uh, uh, doing what I was expecting, uh, expecting of them, uh, I left and go back to the, uh, and go back to the ANC. In the ANC, uh, I was not that uh, active, but uh, I've been voting for the ANC up until... Uh, uh, the time of where uh, the former president Jabon Big. After that, I never uh, uh, voted for the ANC again because I saw it. Uh, there's no future here because of corruption and everything, all the wrongdoings in the ANC. Thank yeah. you very much, Andre. Thank you so much for that. And Vuyani, for you taking that decision of not even going for a political party but going at it alone as an independent candidate, why? Um, it was just because. I was requested by the communities in Ward 10 um, simply because they were tired of political parties who, who are not giving them a full service that they did, that, that, that they really desperately looking for. Mm -hmm. So I was nominated by them and they requested me because they had trust in me. And I agreed. Sure, and you agree to that. As Pamandla, did yes. that shock you at all? No, 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 no. It did not, honestly speaking, because um, remember, we are coming from a royal family, which is Mashia. That family respects and understands democracy of the Republic of South Africa. 
So we are united in diversity in a nutshell. Thank you. Yeah. And when you listen to what, um, what, what was it, uh, was it Lois or now who was speaking about moving from the ANC and then um, going to the PAC, um, what do you make of that maneuver that has taken place? And you are still remaining with the ANC, um, Spamant. Thank you very much. Uh, my point of view, uh, the ANC or the African National Congress, it is still relevant uh, in the struggle of the Republic of South Africa, not only South Africa, but also the African continent, looking into their policies, like for an example, the one that speaks to uh, free education and the one that is currently uh, underway, um, the land issue of which it is relevant because in South Africa, uh, honestly speaking, yes, we are liberated, but Honestly speaking, 87% of the land be be belongs to the hands of a minority. Then the 13% belongs to the majority, uh, which is the black people. Then therefore the ANC is still relevant because that discussion is still underway. So that is why I have chosen to remain and be a member of the African National Congress. And, and I'm, st I'm still going to be yeah. the member of the African National Congress uh, in the future. Vuyani, have you ever been a member of the ANC, considering that you have your cousins who have been members of the ANC, and there you have um, U Uspamandla still remaining a member of the ANC? Yes, I have been a member of the ANC. I've even served in different structures in the ANC. Um, I've been a BEC member, um, an additional member of the BEC. Um, I've also been a member of the PAC as well. That was before me, myself, joining the, the, the ANC. So you've been to the PAC, PAC as well. Um, Loiso, you lost yes, the cousin I was, there as I was well. Actually, uh, I was actually groomed by a University of Transkei student who happens to be my uncle who taught me about social, so, socialism as well as pan-Africanism. And then from there, I, I actually grew interest in politics. And then later on, I left the PAC because they didn't want to reform. Um, you, you, you know, when, when times are changing, you have to change with time. So the ANC was the relevant party that I could go and work for. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Loiso, as, as the person who says that you were the first one to become an activist and therefore also uh, becoming a, a politician, who would you say is the smartest, politically speaking? <laughs> is that question uh, no, let, 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 let's, let's get Loisa to answer that question first say, and then we come into you we smart, I can't say everyone anyone is smartest except me because <laughs> all of them they, I, 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 I've taught them everything about the politics especially Vian because Vian uh, is more uh, mature than uh, the other two politically so I will say it's, it's me who has taught them everything about the politics. Mm -hmm. Spamanda, why yes. didn't you go through the hands of uh, Loiso? It was because of the political ideology. Mm -hmm. It was because yeah, of the political ideology. V um, and Vuyani, yes. you, you wanted to add something quickly? Um, I, I, I'm not sure about the fact that who's the smartest. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what I'm sure of is that uh, we, we, we grow each other politically by having, um, you know, constant debates and, and, and we learn from each other from those debates because apart from family, we do talk politics. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's what I can say. Um, I, I'm not disputing the fact that uh, but Lois is saying uh, he, 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 he did have some sort of um, uh, assistant in me growing politically. Well, thank you, Jen, so much. Let's see what uh, the uh, November 1st elections will bring about, and let's see who will win that award between um, the four cousins there, Spamanda, Lois, Oluyolo, as well as Vianney. Good luck.
Uh, we'll be watching that, that race very quickly. Thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. We are going to the community of what and to vote EFF, vote for the team. Bye-bye, 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 bye-b
Yeah. There's also the idea that we don't only measure governance based on clean audits, but we want to see the quality of our lives changing. And I think there's, there's this shift in our society where we want to try and see and find different ways or find alternatives because mm. people are looking to change their lives, the quality of their Let lives. Let me just quickly uh, try and push this question in. We were hoping to speak to Luyolo, who's yeah. now with the AIC. And remember back in 2016, that negotiation that happened between the ANC and the AIC, and the AIC wanted to wanted Matadela back in KZN, and that hasn't happened. What do you make of that? And is it possible at all to make a coalition agreement binding? Look, I think a coalition agreement is a political uh, um, agreement. It's, it's, it's something negotiated between political parties. To, and if it's, if it's signed as a contract, perhaps the AIC can take the ANC to court and fight it out in court and say, but this is the agreement that we came to and this is the, on the basis which we signed and agreed to work together. And in that way, I think it could be binding. It could be a test case to say, can a coalition ag agreement mm -hmm. be binding? Um, but at this, st at this stage, without the AIC taking the ANC to a court, it's very difficult to say because we could just say that they didn't have the strength or, uh, within the, 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 the relationship yeah. in the coalition to actually push their coalition party to meet um, um, the obligations that they, they had committed to, to doing. Uh, well, when they agreed. Thank you so much. And Nombumelelo is staying with us for the rest of the show. Thank you so much for choosing us this evening. Lots more coming up, including John Vulikate and uh, Nando's cutting the wings of Gareth Cliff. And welcome back. This election has uh, brought um, this election has brought uh, the question of young generation taking over from their respective political parties. Uh, today we are in conversation with the Young Communist League as well as uh, the EFF, and we will be looking into the role of the young generation in campaigns for their respective parties. We are now joined by the Young Communist League spokesperson Lozi Maudwane, as well as the EFF's treasurer um, Ompile Maudwe. Good evening. Thank you so much for making time for us. Let me first start off here. Umpile, for, for you as a young person, when, when did that bug bite, that political bug? Okay, just quickly unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, good evening to you and good evening to the viewers at home. So I grew up from a very poor family. Um, my dad passed away when I was only eight months old. And my mom used to say to me, Danam, the only key to success is education. So focus on education. So I've gone through up to the university where I did science subject. And, you know, with science students, all you need to do is after the lectures, you'll go to the laboratory and all that. But when I went to the university, then that's when I get exposed to politics. I was not active, I was not even interested because my goal there was really to find education, find a certificate and go and knock on some few doors to then um, find a job. But then I learned that actually politics is everything else you do in life. You know, the price of bread is determined by politics. Mm. The price of education, the, 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 the tuition fees and accommodation fees and everything else in life uh, comes from politics. So... There was no political party really that I was looking up to until in 2012, I think, when the ANC started to persecute the commander in chief and president of the EFF. I got so much interested in politics because I wanted to know why are they treating him the way they were and what are the issues? Why is he fighting and why are they then fighting him back? And I got really, really interested uh, and mm -hmm. I agreed with everything that you were saying because that was exactly the, the pain that we grew up with and the pain that we're still enduring even um, at that time. Yeah. And I was one of those who would, I mean, genuinely say, why is he not forming his own political party who will support him? Um, and, and I was very excited when the EFF was formed in 2013, actually. I was one of those that waited for the opportunity to surface. Then I became one of those uh, fortunate people that 
were in contact with those that were um, then sent to come to the region to join the And e look at EFF. you now, the position that you hold now in the EFF as the Treasurer General of the party, and this is somebody who only really got interested in politics back in 2012. Dozi, just quickly for you, when did it start? Um, good evening to you, Aldrin, and good evening to the viewers of the SAPC. Um, you know, we're products of our own struggles in society. And for me, I'm from a very, very poor background uh, as a young person. Lost my father at the age of six. I am a son to a security guard. So for me, I've always been um, fascinated by the contradictions which exist in our society. And I've always believed in the struggle of the poor and the working class. I am a product of um, my community, firstly, and I'm also a product of the Progressive Youth Alliance. Mm -hmm. I started leading uh, during my high school days in courses, and then I went to SASCO, I think, um, uh, in college. That's the first time I met SASCO um, and the Young Communist League. Yeah. So um, for me, it's been more than 15 years, really. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was also because I had a grandfather who happened to have joined the South African Communist Party in 1950. Josie, with the local government elections coming up and uh, lots of questions being asked about the participation of young people in these elections and um, the IEC also coming out saying that only just above uh, 500,000 new registered voters that came on board. What would you say about um, the, the interest or probably lack of interest of young people when it comes to politics as somebody who's inside politics? No, well, for me, it's not about lack of interest, and it does not reflect lack of, lack of interest. With that 500,000 that we're talking about, 90% is actually young people. Um, it actually shows the interest of young people um, in, in, in the politics of the day. Um, if you also get to check across, um, especially in the African National Congress, this time around we have got a lot of councillor candidates in both PR lists and in uh, what list who happen to be young people. Um, so for, for, for me, um, young people have actually raised their voice in mm -hmm. these elections to say we want to participate and we want to be part of it. And not only through voting, not only uh, through campaigning, if you can check these local government elections closely, the ideas that are actually occupying the center space are those of young people. Ompile, do you agree with that? No, I don't. I think it's very concerning, um, um, Aldrin, that a lot of young people are not registered to vote. I mean, we are doing door to door on a daily basis and you come across them people who are eligible to vote, who are not actually registered to vote. And I think it's because they have been failed too many times by the ruling party. So they don't see the need really to go and register to vote because the ruling party has not given the services that they were supposed to give to our people. But of course, we are excited as the EFF and those numbers that are being told by the IEC that they registered to vote, we believe they are our members because it is the EFF that actually ran the campaign to motivate, to encourage young people to go and register to vote and to explain to them that there's no credential struggle that is going to assist them to bring bread on the table. Yeah. There is no struggle credential that is going to uh, create opportunities for jobs for them. And uh, we're excited because if you look at um, the IEC, they have not really done that much in encouraging young people. And I'm saying this because, Aldrin, if you look at the trend from 1994, the IEC used to have two registration weekends, encouraging people to go and register to vote. But since 2014, you can go and check the records. They've been having one. And also, even their campaign has not been that strong. Actually, that's so a question that I want to ask. That's a question, actually, that I want to raise with my guest um, this evening as well, about the role of the IEC in educating um, the voters as well. Ompile and Lose, thank you, much. thank you so much for your time. Let's just quickly look at some of the social media posts that have come through in relation to the conversations that we are having this evening. Um, some of those posts coming through via Twitter. What you can do is use the hashtag elections360. That is elections360. Give us your comment about the conversations that we are having here on um, SABC News Channel 404. And of course, this is a build up to the local government elections. Um, I can't see those tweets. If you can just quickly put those tweets up the wall. Okay, here, yeah, this one is from Divine says that, wow, what lesson are we learning here? Tolerance, though different um, ideolo ideologies, we are still a family. Seazalana.
And uh, Bonis was saying that uh, John Vuligate, I guess that's a, that's a vote for John, Stian Hazen. And this one from uh, the Adius. Okay, that uh, tweet just disappeared. Uh, we'll try to get that tweet back up again. So there you have a conversation amongst young people about young people. Um, what do you draw from that? Um, you have those on the other hand who are saying that uh, young people are actually interested in participating in, in, in politics. But uh, for Ompile, it's a different experience. What I draw from that discussion, Aldrin, um, and if you look at the, the, uh, the data, so young people are not registering at the rate that they should be and could be. Uh, when you look at the growth in the voting age population, those who are eligible to vote versus those who actually register to vote, uh, the voters' role is not keeping up, right, in terms of its, its growth, right? And so I'd, I'd agree with Umpile that it's, it's quite uh, uh, worrying to see that young people are not registering at a high enough rate. But I also agree with Lose who says that it's not that young people are apathetic about mm. politics. If you look at the number of social movements that are operating across the country, if you look at the protest movements that are also operating across the country, it's young people that are spearheading so what, a lot does, of that. So does it then mean that they're not interested in the traditional way it's, elect of it's electoral politics ah. that young people and, and some other groupings in our society are rejecting. Another important discussion is around the, the non-voters, mm -hmm. right, and, and um, the falling rates of turnout, particularly in the general election, the national provincial election. Um, and we also know that in local government election, the turnout is generally lower and, and therefore starting from a lower base. But that's a concern, is that people are actually not rejecting politics per se they are rejecting electoral politics. Mm -hmm. And that tells us something about um, they, uh, their perceptions about what political parties have to offer. And so they're exploring alternative ways of participating mm -hmm. in democracy, but not through political yep. parties. And I've, I've seen that, that social activism as well on social media. Exactly. And one of those discussions that we'll be having a bit later on is in relation to um, that discussion that, uh, that Garrett Cliff and John Steen Hazen had um, and Nando's now clipping those wings of Gareth Cliff. And that is because of the activism that took place on social media as well. But here's another interesting bit about politics. It's always unpredictable. Well, we can do the research and try to predict, but then just something happens. So today I went out to the Democratic Alliance's rally that was at Mary Fitzgerald Square to look at what the Democratic Alliance was promising. And then it hit me that back in 2016, the Democratic Alliance was part of those various political affiliations that made sure that Jesus arrives in Johannesburg, city of Twane, Nelson Mandela Bay. Don't laugh. <laughs> Let's take a look. So back in 2016, you'd remember that popular phrase that went the likes of Dumelang Bahais. Well, it's not there anymore. John Steenhazen is now the leader of the Democratic Alliance. The question is, will the Democratic Alliance, under the leadership of John Stiernazen, make sure that Jesus arrives in the city of Johannesburg, just like he did in 2016? The winds of change were blowing and brought about history. Behind these doors, not only did the ANC find itself mourning the loss of a councillor, but on that same day, it also mourned the loss of the richest metro on the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have silence, please? Thanks. One of our councillors, who was very ill, was ill. It's now on social media, everyone is tweeting it, has passed on. And for the ANC, more bad news was ahead. AFF Tabakai Vutela DA Namaya Rahemen Mashabakat election. Thank you, Speaker. And members of the House, it is my great pleasure and honor to accept the nomination as proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And history was made. This meant voters were not convinced by the ANC Deputy President, Cyril Ramaphosa's optimism back in 2016. We remain confident that we will emerge victorious. 
I can smell victory. Vic uh, victory is in the air. I can smell it. Also, it meant Ramaphosa would live in a ward and metro governed by the Democratic Alliance. Well, that would soon change with Herman Mashaba resigning as the mayor of the city of Joburg. And let's look at where other political party leaders are registered at. EFF's Julius Malema Ward 13 in Pulukwane, the ward is under the EFF's leadership. Freedom Front Plus's Peter Grunewald, Ward 30 in Stilfontein, the ward is under the Freedom Front Plus's leadership. The ACDP's Kenneth Miche, Ward 43, Ekurlen Metro, the ward is under the DA leadership. IFP's Velinkosi Nishabisa, Ward 11 in Shabisa Municipality, the ward is under the IFP leadership. The Democratic Alliance's John Steenhazen, Ward 36, Eteguini Metro, the ward is under the DA leadership. While Kobes Musiwa Likota, Ward 112 in the city of Johannesburg, is under the ANC leadership. The Good Party's Patricia DeLille, Ward 43 in the city of Cape Town, the ward is under the DA leadership. And UDM's Bandu Olomisa, Ward 22, Mkanduli in KSD municipality, the ward was won by the ANC in 2016. Aldrin St. Pierre, SABC News. Well, that leaves me with the question around what is it about politics, about the voter perhaps, that sometimes even though you find a political party leader living in your ward, you are not that convinced. That conversation after this. Nompumelelo, just quickly, what do you make of that package that I compiled earlier on? And also just this idea around um, because there is a, a big political figure that lives in your ward, therefore the perception is that it must then translate into the popular vote for you. But for the president of the country, not the case. Look, uh, like I said before, politics is deeply personal. And politicians need to learn the art of connecting with the people that they live with. And we do know it's not uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's strongest suit, that of connecting with people down there that are not up there. And it, it really demonstrates the, the aloofness of leadership, uh, particularly as the ANC has become more and more successful. Its leaders have actually created a greater distance between themselves mm. and the people, only showing up really during campaigning time. And I think he doesn't spend as much time in his ward as we would like to think. I mean, he is the president of the country. Mm -hmm travels a lot but the question would be do do his neighbors know him is has he become too good for them now that he's president um, well, he used to do you the know. walks <laughs> yeah but uh, i mean he does the walks mostly in cape town i think i mean uh, i think so so those are the types of questions those mm. leaders whose wards actually support them it, it might be in my opinion that they actually connect with the people yeah. in those communities particularly local government uh, level people want to connect with people they know Let's see what's going to happen on the 1st of November. Well, so as the 1st of November polls draw nearer, the SABC has been hard at work to make sure that viewers get the best coverage of the municipal polls. Uh, Zinzi Iswa, uh, Mani, as well as Mango Bangosi bring you the behind the scenes of it all um, as we bring it to your screens as well as our radio stations. As the country gears up for the 2021 local government elections, SABC News is also preparing to give the viewers blow-by-blow -blow coverage of the municipal polls here at the IEC Results Center. Join us as we go behind the scenes to see what they have in store for us. Okay, covering the local government elections is probably one of the biggest productions that a broadcaster will do, especially us at SABC who are planning to cover every corner that we can possibly get to. So it starts off with a whole lot of planning. The planning starts months before. I mean, we started speaking elections at the beginning of the year, but technically we started preparing our minds for a setup like this last year already. So in total, if you look at what we have at Auckland Park, what we have at ROC and who we have uh, in the regions, we are touching 500 and probably going over 500 people just to make this uh, production uh, happen. 
The facilities that we've deployed here at ROC are not only for SABC uh, news coverage, but they are also here as an official host broadcaster for the elections. We are the ones that provide a pool feed to other broadcasters that are going to be coming here. Uh, we've got the ROC feeds that I mentioned also coming here and they will be distributed to broadcasters that are here. They'll be beamed on satellite and they'll be streamed uh, to other uh, broadcasters that uh, interested in getting the feeds. We're going to be hearing people's voices, seeing uh, their conditions, uh, seeing the voting out there through all of that that we have deployed out there. So I would say it's, it, it, it's quite big on contribution, looking at about more than 50 points that we can cross to at any given time uh, that we would like to cross to. So plenty of, of news coming in for these elections. SABC News will bring you your election coverage in all 11 official languages. Catch us on SABC News Channel, all our radio stations, and our digital platforms. For SABC News, I am Zinzi Swamani with Mango Bangosi. Well, and the SABC will also bring you coverage in Klu as well as Square and Sign Language. Well, Nando's has distanced itself from the comments by controversial radio personality Gareth Cliff during an online episode of his show, The Popular Eatery, which has uh, cemented its marketing and satire, says Cliff failed to create an environment where free speech was possible. Social media eruption mixed emotions after the segment aired with many calling Cliff a racist. The show, which uh, the leader of the Democratic Alliance, John Steenhazen, and activist Mzuli Rakevana, would to discuss the upcoming local government elections created a furore over Cliff's alleged dismissive and discriminatory approach towards Rakivana. Let's take a listen to making time for us. Uh, when you first saw that post and trending on social media as well, uh, did you, could, you, could you predict that this is how it would end with Nando's uh, cutting the wings of Gareth yeah. Cliff? Evening, uh, Aldrin, to, to yourself and the viewers. Um, obviously, yeah, it's a um, it's an unfortunate situation, uh, and obviously, Nando's is a brand that would want to deassociate de themselves with that, right? Um, quite typical, quite expected um, um, of a, a, a South, Af South African context, right? Um, two white males imposing themselves onto a, a young intellectual black woman, right? It's it's unfortunate that it's expected, uh, but un but I think. Uh, considering the environment, uh, John Stenhazen missed an opportunity to dispel the notion that uh, DA is a racist um, party, right? He sat there watching this white male in a, a form of um, a Gareth Cliff imposing uh, himself onto, onto, onto this young lady. And the irony is that... Uh, um, John Stenez is, is quite enthusiastic in calling orders in, 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 in Parliament. That was the opportunity. He really missed an opportunity to, to clarify himself and the DA that they are a, a non-racial party yeah. and, and, and he failed dismally. Do you think that the damage is already done even though you have this apology from, um, from Nando's? The damage is being done. Um, there's been an outrage. Uh, from a brand point of view, the damage has been done. People will, uh, for now, they will deassociate, de particularly black young women will deassociate with this brand, right? Because uh, there would have been um, thought behind their alliance with the form of your Gareth Cliff, right? So there will definitely be damage, um, immediate damage and in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah. for you? I think, um, Aldrin, uh, Gareth Cliff is already a controversial uh, figure. So I think for the, for for me uh, this 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 was almost like inevitable. Something like this was going to happen, and what stuns me is that both Gareth and John Steenhazen didn't see anything wrong with the optics of it. Two white males in South Africa speaking yeah. over a black woman who was trying to share a perspective about the importance of um, the lived experiences, particularly of young black women. Those, that group which is uh, disproportionately affected by the social ills in our country, when you talk unemployment, when you talk inequality, mm -hmm. when you talk all those issues, it's young black women that are disproportionately yeah. affected. And you can't take race out of that. 
race is institutionalized, it's systemic. And then we've got, we have to deal with microaggression in our society as well. So, I mean, I think it also revealed the DA's true character. John there was actually revealing to us what the DA is actually about. And I wonder whether anyone in the party is calling John out for that. Uh, Nombumila, thanks so much for your time. And Dr. Zogala, I appreciate your time as well. And uh, speaking about John Steenhazen, which uh, political party leaders' dance moves are getting you to the polls? Let's take a look at uh, John Vuligate. And you'll never guess what Mahauta got up to today. Take a listen. While covering the Democratic Alliance's rally here at Mary Fitzgerald Square, guess who we bumped into? Mahauta from Batung Party. I don't know whether the IEC is going to agree with this kind of behavior because this is totally unacceptable. It's not your political party rally. What are you doing here? Why are it's not acceptable? Who says that? Eh? Who made those rules? Because I'm a fearless leader. Now I go in the midst of the opposition. One good one. Kibata batu batu fibe hore na kia deliver. Ena kibata ba understand and twenty one. Haki rikita nonsense. It doesn't mean rikita nonsense. Nonsense and nonsense are two different things. One good one. Is it the same as John Vuligato? Mamel kia tata benga John Vuligato. But I stand to say that ba ena ya nonsense only nonsense. Haki rikita nonsense. Who chow rikita chow tsa so. Total right. Communication in Habari Mutueta nonsense. But your real and total grand. One bad, one good. So, Tabanga John Vuligate, Akitibori Johnny as Taze and Nikabakiman, or Uitabella Gaita by a Huvula Gate, because Runa Halerisha Pile John Vuligate, Nasa Store, and then a Kia Taliba to Bahaya Honamo, Kibanki, like in Ali Group, and Ataba to Bati, a battle joining Batung. Ritabereta nonsense of Kaufella, Kito Bon Tamara Aldre Nikirikadi one. Ha, hot on you. Tanko. Well, let's see whether the Democratic Alliance will lay a complaint uh, against Batung Party. Regina, Riba Emmett. Batung, sir. John, John. John, John. John, John. John, Johnny Ubale, Utama Mahauta, because you are born or get me at a nonsense. Harry and Molehe. Viva Matum Viva! Viva Matum Viva! Tanko! 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 Viva Matum Viva! Viva Matum! Viva Matum Viva! Dumelan, we can't. We are the Matum. Kuriliba Mangu, Narieta Ingi. Matung. Not but we are saying nonsense. We are saying nonsense. Thank you. Okay, we will tell you about him. Let's get back to the guy. Keep a little viva, but you viva. Makauta invading people's rallies. Batung. <laughs> Let's not forget that we must vote on the 1st of November. Thank you so much for choosing us this evening. We leave you with this beautiful visuals of the scenery in the eastern free state um, Maluti Apofung municipality. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for choosing Elections 360 with me, Aldrin Simpia. We're back again next weekend. And next weekend, we'll be coming live from the IEC's Results Center. That is The Rock. That's where the show will be coming live from as we build up to the local government elections taking place on the 1st of November, Monday. It is a deal. Zanzi. 
Play your part and help curb the spread of COVID-19 by wearing a face mask at all times.